control your mental health and whatever. And, and yeah, that would be actually really good. Right. Yeah, totally, totally. I think um, I actually have this thing. So about two years into adults, um, I stopped working with anybody under the age of 21. Okay. Because I just felt like 18, 19, and 20, they were too immature to like really grasp what they were doing and shooting. And then um, it just felt like on set, you could just feel the immaturity in in the terms of mental capacity. Hey, I must be complicated. That, that yeah. Because that's such a, I mean, fragile state of like age for your for yeah. mind development. Okay. Yeah, I was I was 21 when I started adult, so I think that really helped me because mm -hmm. um, I wasn't so crazy. But I think like if I would have gotten in when I was 18, when I was like a dirty stripper, bro, I would have went wild. I would have spent all my fucking money like, so and I was no... really crazy. I would have been really fucking crazy. But are there like are there like genuinely nice people who are somehow somewhat mentors that are like, hey, making a lot of money, maybe spend less money here. And you know, like, is there any? There's only other girls that are like right. that, but the directors, the companies, and the agents are absolutely not like that. The goal okay. is to keep you in porn and to shoot you as much as possible so there's no, and so use there's, you up. Really. There's no incentive for anyone to be like nice with you as no. and to help you. And you don't of. get other girls to really mentor you until you've kind of like put a foothold in the door. So like if you're a year in, right. like girls older girls still won't take you seriously like you have to do a lot of work and you have to kind of stick around because girls come in and out so much they want to see that like you're here to build a brand rather than just here to like work for your boyfriend a pimp or make quick money or you're mm -hmm. just fucking crazy right because there's also just a lot of crazy girls because unfortunately it attracts that type of okay. quick money right um and i'm sure the same thing goes with acting i'm sure there's a lot of crazy actresses and actors like they just don't make make it big or they get fucking caretakers that make them be chill right you know? right but there's like i'm saying is that uh it's it sounds like it's not necessarily as easy to find someone who will be willing mm -hmm. to naturally be of of a type of a mentor person to like no. i think there's like 10 out. girls that don't gatekeep and that'll help other girls out okay like 10 girls is like all i can think of off the top of my head well that's that's tens tens a lot you know tens is a, for sure if they're you, all the biggest name girls too that's the funny thing Okay. There's the girls that don't gatekeep, the girls that will give I'm their sorry, time. Sorry, what is gatekeep? I don't... Um, like, keep information from you so you can do better. Like, oh, I learned how to be successful in my career, but I'm not going to share those tools because I don't want you to get to my level. Okay, okay, right? I see, I see. I see when see, really, see. it's like, if we all get to a certain level and we're all making a certain type of money, we're going up together, it's better together, right? Right, We can right. have more power as there's a team. Enough, there's enough for everyone. Yeah, no. for sure. Also, you just have power as a team. You can make money off of other girls if you're being kind to them and you're shooting with them, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like mutually beneficial. Um, and it's less toxic, not being competitive. Is that like, as a general rule, has that changed much over your time of, of doing, being in the, in, no. the, in the game? No. 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 I'm not toxic. And I got to like maybe six years into the industry, um, I stopped having all the toxic shit happen. What do you mean um, toxic shit happening to you? Yeah, like I stopped working with girls that would talk shit on me. Um, so I you were you were was able very to selective. Weed them, out, weed them out. Yeah, and then I mean, like even like even when I didn't shoot like two years ago, there was some shit people were saying that I said, and you know now I'm not like I'm not a child. So like when people claim I say things, like I called up this girl and I recorded the phone call and was like. So where did you hear I said this? And she's like, I didn't. I just said that. And I'm like, cool, thank you. I'm letting you know I'm recording this. Okay. Um, you're being so recorded, you, okay. and I'm gonna give this to the girl that you're talking shit on, so she can take it to her lawyer for defamation. Wow. So you're holding people accountable, who yeah. are otherwise seemingly don't even bother to be accountable. Yeah, them. because the people don't understand if you're in porn, it's still a professional industry, and if you want to play in this professional industry, then I'm gonna treat you like a professional. Right. If you do anything to you know, go against my character or my brand, I'm going to sue you for defamation or I'm going to hold you accountable to it. Right. So I started, I think, at my sixth year. That's when I got really into the business side of it. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to treat this like a business. And if anybody wants to come after me or do something, then you're going to be met with how my business is going to be but dealing you, with you. But you only got to that place through uh, through direct experience of seeing that it's the other way around. It. The other way is just you being mistreated constantly so yeah through constant experience of that you then learn to and i met a few lawyers you met oh. a few okay <laughs> so i think that really helped too um so that was cool okay so this like accountability and professionalism just grows over years yeah but there, like in every industry i suppose there's 
tons and tons of professional people. Yeah. Are. What about like acting? <clears throat> Have you run into like a lot of like unprofessional shit or just like well, I craziness? Think, I think um, what I've noticed, I guess also as someone who um, doesn't have formal education on it, is that um, a lot of people don't necessarily know what they're doing. Yeah. Like in, in every industry. And there's me with someone who hasn't initially had a practical experience of it all. I kind of was afraid of it because you're like, you're going to come into this thing and everybody's super going to be a pro. Yeah. yeah and you really want to, you're excited because you want to do the best, but you don't know what the best is. And then when you arrive and then you notice that some people don't necessarily do and kind of some people are winging it, but believably enough. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's like a, a whole general rule, yeah. but I've noticed over my decade being in and out of this industry that I think that's everywhere in life. Yeah. People um, not, don't necessarily know what they're doing, which is not a bad thing. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. But I it's have... just like, it I was like, oh, it's fine to not always know what I've, you're doing. I've come to this like weird conclusion, <laughs> especially since the pandemic, that people operate on about 60% of them their self. And if you're somebody that can just operate on 90%, you're going to be successful. Wow, I wish I could measure that. Because most people will, you know, like, instead of, like, being like, oh, I'm going to get up and, and do this, you know, most people will lazily get out of bed and start their morning, like, oh, let me have a cup of coffee and blah, 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 and don't, like, strive to achieve their day. Run! And a lot of people just accept what comes to them. And, like, I think, um, especially in entertaining, other people can kind of make your brand in your face. Right. So they'll just be like, oh, it's cool. I'm doing this. And like, maybe I'm not going to study the script. Even important girls do that. And the director will be like, fuck, she's terrible. But we'll edit to make it look good, right? I have literally witnessed that. But I think it's the same thing in business. And I've noticed like sometimes, not to sound condescending, but sometimes I feel like, wow, I feel like I'm doing so well just because I'm operating on like just operating a little bit higher than most people, right? And I'm like, if other people just worked a little bit more on their percentages of what they do. But, but I mean, this like self uh, sense of accountability that you seem to have developed, do you think yeah. you, you always had it or was it something that you just developed over time? And the, the, mm. then because of that, you became so professional. And then because of that, like this onslaught of success that you have in your life. I think I dealt that, with a like lot a of things. Thing? Yeah, yeah, because I think I dealt with a lot of things in my past by working hard, right? So like, if something crazy was going on at home, I would dive into my schoolwork, right? If something crazy was going on, like, with a boyfriend, I'd go to be a server, right? And everybody else wouldn't do their side work. I would have the manager praise me because I would be not only doing my side work in between bussing tables, but I'd be scrubbing like the fridge out with like a toothbrush or something because it was so, gross, you know. So, but like, is that is that to distract yourself from having to to think about think, like because you because you sounds like you're constantly in in like motion. And, yeah, and, I think it was I think it was just like you know when things are crazy and stuff like that. Lean into the possibility of success, and by right. getting being successful, you're gonna be doing work. You're gonna have to work hard for it. 